back. This is now our last segment here on uh, World Crisis Radio, and we're talking about this moment where you reach the point of ungovernability as a result of the economic depression, which is destroying the economic pie and essentially meaning that uh, certain factions are going to get liquidated and dumped and thrown overboard. They're going to get the axe, and this is what paralyzes the political system. And of course, with Obama, it's the sacrifice of everybody to Wall Street. What the Republicans represent is the small business, petty bourgeoisie, the low-wage Southern employers, and other economic factions that say, we are not going to pay for the survival of the insurance companies because that will destroy us. So that is the ungovernability part of it. Uh, and whatever you think of these people, they are fighting for survival in the same way that Wall Street is. Obama is basically saying the survival of the insurance companies is a key component of Wall Street. In many ways, the basis of the entire Wall Street system, uh, that is worth the dumping of the uh, small business people across the country and the, and the southern low-wage employers. And you can see that's where the resistance is coming from. The, the, the point that is uh, parallel to this, comparable to this, in the Weimar Republic, Germany, 19... Uh, 20 to 1933, is this 30th of March, 1930, 80 years ago, an 80-year cycle. Interesting uh, that it happens this way. It doesn't always happen this way, but this time it, it does. So 80 years. In New York State, we have reached paralysis already, and we're now on the verge of a brooding-like austerity dictatorship of this guy, Ravitch. Remember, when you dump the parliament and you dump the unions, that can be fascism. Watch out. And uh, I think that's where we're, we're headed. So we better mobilize to make sure it doesn't happen. The difference between Miller is that Miller had a majority in the parliament, the Reichstag. He had a majority of the votes. Brüning never did. So how did Brüning rule? Well, President von Hindenburg declared a general state of emergency. And under the Weimar Constitution, he was able to rule by decree. That is to say... Brüning would say, here's my austerity decree number one, two, three, and four, the so-called Notverordnungen, austerity emergency decrees, emergency austerity decrees. You put these out under your signature, von Hindenburg, and I will be the prime minister, the chancellor, under that. So Brüning never had a majority. He hung on in power from the 30th of March, 1930, until the summer of 1932. I think it's July 1932, then he falls. By the time he falls, you're about six months away from Hitler. And there were two more chancellors, von Papen and Schleicher, but essentially you're on the verge of Hitler. Hitler is at the gates. So by that count, we are approximately um, three years away from a, a, a very serious totalitarian uh, development here in the United States. The source of this impetus, I repeat, is the world economic depression and its uh, effects on the, uh, on the political system. That doesn't mean economic determinism. It means get the political system going to change the economic policy, and you can escape this. There is no determinism. It's just that if you don't get busy, this is what is likely uh, to happen. So under the austerity dictatorship, von Hindenburg has his gang, his camarilla, of uh, his clique that uh, runs him, and Brüning delivers the austerity decrees. I would say, again, that's Petraeus Romney. Petraeus comes in as the man on horseback. They say, General, what are you going to do about the Depression? They say, I'll use the same methods that I used to defeat our enemies in Iraq and Afghanistan. And they'll all swoon, and <laughs> they'll be like hope and change. Uh, and uh, Romney will be uh, the asset stripper and hedge fund hyena that we know the guy who created Scott Brown, the guy who created the Massachusetts healthcare system, which is the model for what Obama is doing, uh, he will be the austerity dictator. Petraeus trying to float above it if he can. What did Bruning do? Well, balance the budget, cut wages, fire public workers, cut entitlements. The main entitlement in the Weimar Republic was an unemployment insurance system. Uh, and unemployment payments, unemployment benefits were cut repeatedly by Brüning, and the Social Democrats did not fight. They didn't go for general strikes. They didn't go for the full range of things that they could have done. Now, here's the thing to remember, though. There was an alternative, and this is a big a dispute among German historians 
and we'll talk about that in the coming broadcast. But I have pointed out that the way you get out of a depression is not to cut the budget, not austerity, not budget cuts, don't fire public workers, don't, don't lower wages. That makes the depression worse. It also makes your de deficit worse. What you've got to do is get control of the central bank, the Federal Reserve in this case, in whole or in part, nationalize it, and force them to cough up 0% credit for production. Now, in the case of uh, Germany, and this is very well documented, in 1930, 31, 32, there were people coming forward with this. Let me just give you a couple of examples. You had a, um, a deputy minister, a state secretary in the uh, economics ministry by the name of Schaeffer, who said, we should force the Reichsbank, that is the central bank, the Federal Reserve, we should force the Reichsbank to increase lending by two and a half billion marks, at that time a significant sum, and get people working on infrastructure. We want to build the autobahns. We want to build the superhighways. We want to build the uh, railroad system, the in, expand the telephone system, do all these things, increase the capital stock of the nation, in, increase the productivity of labor. In January 1932, a guy called Wagemann, Ernst Wagemann, written Wage Man, this is the federal, the, the, the government statistical office, uh, and they're actually linked to uh, to export industries. I.G. Farben, and we know what they did later, but this was before it. They said three billion marks should be put out by the central bank for the purpose of infrastructure and other uh, such projects. March 1932, the labor minister in the Brüning cabinet proposed behind the scenes to Bruning. This is a guy called Stegerwald. Stegerwald said, we need 1.2 billion marks for job creation. So credit creation leads to job creation, and you cut the ground out from under the fascist mass movement, which at that time had become uh, very, very obvious and very, very threatening. Let's give a couple of more. Uh, the, uh, July, July 1931. German industrialists, represented by a guy called Paul Silverberg, they say this deflationary policy of the central bank, the budget cuts and the budget austerity, the sort of stuff you see with Christie in New Jersey, McDonnell in Virginia, and what the Republicans are demanding, he says, no, we should have 2 billion marks put out for infrastructure. Then the the most uh, important one that we've mentioned so far, the uh, trade union group, the ADGB. They have Wojtynski, Tarnow, and Bada in January of 1932. They say two billion marks from the Reichsbank for infrastructure and related production. It would not be inflationary because the growth of production would compensate for the creation of additional pur purchasing power. Quite right. And now above all, the German Employers Association, the bosses, the, the equivalent of the Chamber of Commerce, December 1931, they want uh, a similar sum in the billions of marks for infrastructure and credit creation, job creation, and economic uh, revival. In other words, a stimulus in real terms, pump priming in terms of the real, physical, tangible wealth production. So all of these things were there. Now, Brüning was obviously uh, influenced by the Austrian school. Remember that Ludwig von Mises and Hayek had been writing in the 1920s already, uh, and the idea was, no, don't do anything uh, to, uh, to interfere with the business cycle, and don't do anything that might cause uh, inflation. And indeed, that was the stupidity of the Social Democrats. They said, uh, essentially, a doctrinaire Marxist, uh, argument that you can't end the problems of capitalism without getting rid of capitalism, so they refuse to support these programs. Anyway, the alternative...